in this modern world, how can we achieve that great city, that Islamic city? What are the ways of doing this? For example, you are talking about uh, city as a teacher, this but is said city as a museum, right. the city of knowledge. Right. Uh, are these examples? Uh, are these examples of moving towards that city, yeah. that great city? Yeah. Well, number one, I think I would also. You notice that in in my answer to a lot of your questions, I am I am encouraging myself and encouraging you to use uh, or to revisit a lot of terms, a lot of terminologies, right? And I would also add to this issue of revisiting terms the the term Islamic cities, right? Because this is also a very problematic term in the sense that. It's as if it's suggesting that there's something called Islamic cities and then maybe Kuffar cities or non-Islamic cities. Yeah, what I mean right? by Islamic is your great city, but uh, yeah. the, the city as it should be. Right. Yeah, what I mean is yes. This is why I'm saying I think we need to elaborate. In which sense? Because Islamic city as a term is suggesting that if we were able to create a specific checklist, a number of characters, then we will end up with, a, with an Islamic city. While if you test the traditional, the traditional cities that emerge in a lot of spots, geographical spots around the Middle East and around the Islamic world, you will see incredible diversity and, and, and huge, huge distinction between the traditional city in Morocco, for instance, versus a traditional city in Manama or a traditional city in Istanbul, right? So what I'm saying is that the more appropriate term I would suggest is cities of Islamic communities, because I think the whole notion of an Islamic community is suggesting that you have a, a number of families, number of community members that they are getting together and they are dwelling in a specific geographic location. But at the same time, there are allowing or there are coexisting with a different number of people coming also from other places around the world. So even if you look at the design of a very simple uh, uh, components of the city, the mosque for instance, you look at the how the mosque was designed in China, in Uzbekistan, yeah. in Iran, in Nigeria and Mali, in Morocco and Tunisia. Huge, huge and radical differences because of the local impact, because of the local characteristics, because maybe uh, some local materials are uh, available, construction techniques emerged from the context there. So I think I think what is what is needed is that instead of uh, of of uh, labeling labeling cities with a specific label, I think as you rightly said, we need to see the uh, the essence of of the traditional Islamic cities or the traditional cities of the Islamic communities, because I think. If there is a call in the world now uh, regarding creative cities and, and, and knowledge cities, cities where you will learn from it, cities that you would encounter knowledge in every street, in every public square, cities that would enhance your knowledge capabilities by looking at the buildings that scattered around it. I wouldn't see a more appropriate answer to this than what was produced during the uh, the traditional Islamic uh, communities, right? Because again, there's an excellent sense of urbanism, there's an excellent sense of street life, there's an excellent sense of social cohesion in public spaces and bazaars and mosques and sahas and so on and so forth. Also the quality of architecture, how architecture was a true representation of advances in science, in mathematics, in geometry, in spirituality, and so on and so forth. So I think, I think what we need to do now in the Middle East and in the Islamic world 
is to use our cities as a sort of uh, a manifestation of a new paradigm, a manifestation of uh, a new relation between us and the rest of the world, a new manifestation of a new image, positive image rather than the shattered image that was created in the last 20-30 uh, years because of Islamophobia and so on and so forth. L let me for instance give you a very interesting example about uh, a, a paper that I wrote uh, and I called it Moscophobia. Moscophobia? Yeah, Moscophobia and I was suggesting that Moscophobia uh, is a phenomenon that I related to the whole issue of Islamophobia. So if we have a fear from Islam, or, or if uh, more accurately, there is, a, there is a fear from Islam in the West, part of this fear is also from the mosque as a building type. Mm. So I was so interested in tracing how when we have chances to build mosques in the West, how we use our creative energy to use those places as a medium to invite people to Islam, to invite people to look at us from a different perspective. And to be honest with you, the paper concluded by it was a total failure. Why? Because we go and, and we will build a mosque or an Islamic center in Washington, D.C., or Portland, Oregon, or Paris, or New York, or Tokyo so on and so forth and all what we are going to do is that we will get a typical Ottoman mosque with the huge closed walls surrounding the mass of the mosque and we will build it there right now we were not able to understand that the, there were a lot of climatic social political economical religious reasons for the Ottoman mosque to look like that when it was situated in Istanbul for instance yes. but when you take it and you put it in, in in Washington this is a huge failure from from the point or from the perspective of neglecting all of these factors that in the first place suggested that this should be the form of the mosque but more importantly is that by putting the mosque as solid as it is, with this very, very solid boundaries around it, you create actually a barrier between the community and the mosque. People in Germany, in Berlin, or Hamburg, or in, in America, in, in Washington DC, in Port or Portland, they don't understand why we have this secretive kind of, uh, of uh, atmosphere around our mosque. If these guys are really praying in the mosque, why don't we, we see them while doing this act? Yeah. And at the same time, if we create this level of transparency, it will be like an invitation for people to see us and to come to us and invite them and so on and so forth. So I think, I think in my own opinion, the whole idea of looking at the city as a, as a place for knowledge accusation, knowledge dissemination, creativity, uh, a more positive interaction between people, um, using architecture as a tool to stimulate our mind, to provoke our, uh, our intellect and so on and so forth. To me, these are more Islamic principles about architecture and urbanism by far more deep and more profound than only uh, uh, imitating old styles or imitating old vocabulary of architecture and urbanism. Yeah, I totally agree with you because, you know, there is a relationship between the norms and the forms. So we have the norms of Islamic norms, but the forms differ from age to age, from place to place empires to empires I can't agree with you more but I have also to be honest with you a lot of us were not able to acknowledge this and when I say a lot of us I'm talking about professor of architecture and urbanism practitioners of architecture and urbanism in the Islamic world and the Middle East we were not able to see that 
Yes, I do belong to Islam as a, it's my religion. Yes, I live within an Islamic community, but also I am in the end of uh, 2016. I am yes. living my contemporary moment. I cannot now, when we when we take our kids walking around the work of Imam Sina, yeah. we will tell them that this is the work of our ancestors. This is the work of our grandfathers, and right now. Yeah. Can you imagine after two, three hundred years from today and, and people would be walking with their kids again, showing them replica of Mimar Sinan work as opposed to our contemporary time creation and contribution. So I think also, although the theoretical idea is there, norms and forms, but we were not able to acknowledge it to the level that we insist on where is our contemporary contribution. Yeah. You know, uh, my, my teacher said that forms force the norms. A form will, will tell you to use its norm. For example, cinema is a form of the modern times or the, the architecture of Bauhaus is a form of modern times and it will force its norms for example a Bauhaus design is not appropriate for Nevada worshipping maybe and you know you know this example so the problem today we are facing I think is when we want to use a form of modernity postmodernity maybe we can't deal with it because because we don't know uh, how our norms norms becomes form how do, how do we f I don't know if, if it's the right word how do we formalize our norms yeah so what do you think about it how can we how can we put our norms into new forms of our age without uh, damaging the norms well, well you know I would answer this by going back to the notion of Bauhaus, for instance, because this is a very interesting example. You know, Bauhaus was a school of thought, yes, but also it was a school, a, an actual school of, uh, of teaching architecture, yes. right? And, and one of the main leaders for the school was uh, a German architect called Walter Gropius, right? Yeah. Now, now, what is interesting is that you can see this is school from different perspectives. One perspective is that this is only a representation of uh, a modern school of architecture, very simple lines, not necessarily related to our spirituality, our uh, uh, discipline and doctrines and so on and so forth. But on the other hand, if we put more effort in understanding these kind of buildings, and as I said, the narrative of the building, the story of the building, as opposed to the shape and the form of the building, you will be amazed that this is, in my own opinion, a very Islamic building. And I'll tell you because why. Because of the simplicity or... No, no. I'll tell you more profound thing than the, the, the issue. I, I totally neglect the issue of the form and simplicity and so on and so forth. But when you read carefully the story of this school, you will realize that the designer, one of his main idea, main ideas of the design of this school is what he called it creating a culture of confrontation in the school. Confrontation. And when he, he said confrontation, he meant knowledge confrontation. Knowledge confrontation. Meaning what? The different spaces in the school, even the staircases, even the corridors, were designed in a way that most of the time students and professors will meet each other. And they will meet each other in the places where something is exhibited. Maybe a, a board, maybe a piece of art, maybe a, 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 a structured solution to a specific problem. And therefore, he insisted on how the different spaces of the school would help to create this knowledge dialogue between different generations of students and also between uh, the, the, the scholars and the professors. Now, this is a very interesting principle that used to be in a lot of uh, old madrasas in yes, Islam. Yes, but it does it work? It, exactly. This is the, exactly the point that I'm talking about, that the West was able to imitate 
or to acknowledge or to observe the essence of our glory, the essence of our genius. As opposed to us, we look at the West only from a very superficial, formalistic uh, manner. So I am, I am suggesting a more profound analysis, a more profound understanding. That's very good. Absolutely. We agree. Uh, let's listen to Ezan and I will sure. Uh, what is the place of advertisement in the city? You know, we see lots of flyers in the ground, big, big you know, billboards. These, these things are irritating, you know, this is like not good for our great city, I can say. So, uh, what is the place for, of advertising, propaganda, maybe? Should we reduce it or it should be it should have some specific places for the cities. How, what's your comment? Yeah. This is a very interesting question. Um, you know, there's a there's a very very nice book uh, written by um, a wonderful professor of architecture and urbanism uh, called Robert Venturi. Robert Venturi. And, yeah, and it's a very old book in the '60s, and the book called Learning from Las Vegas. Right, and Robert Venturi is one of the of the top people that rejected the modern school of architecture and urbanism, and also he he made fun of their slogan "less is more," and he talked about "less is more," and a, a, a great case that he used to see or to say that uh, our cities need to be more vibrant places, more dynamic places is using the example of, of Las Vegas, right? And uh, although it's a sin city, even within the American culture, but he was saying that all these signs and lights, they added a sort of vitality to the city. Now I see exactly his point, but I think, I think he was saying that, or the main thesis of his book was based on comparison between the very boring, oversimplified modern cities and modern urban spaces that was created in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. And then later the postmodernists came to, to try to answer part of this. But I think when we try to examine this now, and particularly in places like Istanbul or Cairo or Rome, where part of the vitality of the city is related to people, the presence of people, People are talking and moving and walking and eating and drinking and, and occupying most of the spaces, particularly the open spaces and public spaces and streets and so on and so forth. So in this sense, if we are faced with a situation in, the, in, in most of the cities of the Islamic world where a lot of people are, uh, are in the streets and they are helping to create this, for instance, even what we heard now, the call for prayer. And you'll see a lot of people moving towards the different mosques and then again creating an interesting vibrancy in the city. So I'm saying in these contexts, we need to be careful of the overuse of advertisement, the overuse of um, billboard signs, and the overuse of uh, visual pollution that in some case, I mean, I was walking yesterday in Taksim and uh, other places around the city and, and sometimes you feel that the quality of the space and the quality of architecture cannot really fit uh, or cannot uh, allow people to put uh, a, a, a board uh, about, I don't know, uh, jeans for instance, or I don't know, Timberland shoes or boots or what have you. So I think, I think the point that Robert Fultui was trying to say in his book is that those boring cities they need to learn from Las Vegas to add vibrancy and to add vitality. I would say we cannot do that in, in, in our cities because already our cities are crowded, full of life, full of vibrancy. And therefore, 
we need to be very careful with the advertisement, the advertisement and billboards and whatever, because you don't want to create uh, too much visual pollution, particularly in sensitive parts of the yeah, city. For example, the Turkish thinker says, Sezai Karakoc, there is no propaganda advertisement in uh, Muslim society. Your work is your advertisement. You produce something, you have a good, for example, your book, your phone, your camera, it's your brand on it. That's your advertisement. Right. You just you just don't go around screaming. Right. But but on the other hand, we need also to understand that the culture that we are living in is also labeled as a culture of consumption. They yes. want you to consume. They want you to spend money all the time. It's you will buy a telephone today as their state of the art and after a couple of months it will be obsolete because they would convince you that uh, how come you still have a phone with i don't know how many uh, pixels camera or whatever you need double this and yes you, and they, they keep on pushing you into this uh, race of consumption so so they all the time will keep on on watching this kind of uh, of pressure to occupy our public spaces with the uh, boards and uh, and billboards and advertising boards and so on and so forth. And uh, but still, as your teacher said, he's absolutely right. If you believe in the quality of your product, then the product itself is uh, is uh, is an advertisement. But then this advertisement would be only. Uh, 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 sort of within a very limited circle of your friends and your colleagues and as opposed to if you put uh, a board in Taksim Square which is basically talking to millions of people yeah okay that's all thank you oh, very much wonderful. it was that's very wonderful, wonderful for me it was me. great great uh, great discussion okay